very powerful tools to encourage your nervous system to be in one state or another, meaning awake or asleep. It's like a gate that your body has to go through in order for you to get into sleep. We have a molecule in our body called adenosine, and the longer we have been awake, brain and body are going to lie down and go to sleep. Well, that brain and body needs cues. It needs inputs to determine when to do those different things. And those cues and inputs arrive through a defined set of what I'll call stimuli, but you can also think of these as levers or tools. The main levers and tools that are going to allow you to control when you are awake and when you are asleep and to get better sleep every single night are light, literally photons, light energy. Could be from sunlight, could be from artificial light. We will discuss those particulars in a moment, as well as darkness. That is the absence of light. So we've got light and dark. Those are two very powerful tools to encourage your nervous system to be in one state or another, meaning awake or asleep. Temperature is another tool or lever. It turns out that when your body is cooling down, you have a greater tendency to fall and stay asleep. In fact, every night when you actually sleep, your body is dropping by one to three degrees and that drop in temperature is required. It's like a gate that your body has to go through in order for you to get into sleep. And in fact, the converse is also true. If your body heats up by one to three degrees or so, you will wake up. So you've got light, dark, temperature, food. And when we say food, we mean what we eat, when we eat, and the amount that we eat. Okay, so light, dark, temperature, food, exercise. And of course, exercise comes in different forms. We can do cardiovascular exercise that can be low intensity, long distance exercise. It can be high intensity, so-called high intensity interval training. It could be weight training, it could be yoga, it could be swimming, any number of different activities. But exercise in general causes an increase in body temperature and tends to make us more alert not just during the exercise, but in the immediate hours after that exercise. Exercise does some other things that relate to our sleep as well, and we'll talk about those today and how you can leverage them. Another potent lever for adjusting your sleepiness and wakefulness is caffeine. This, of course, comes as no surprise to people, but why and how caffeine works might come as a surprise. Very briefly, we have a molecule in our body called adenosine, and the longer we have been awake, the more adenosine builds up in our brain and body and adenosine is part of the reason why we get sleepy. Caffeine effectively operates as a adenosine antagonist. It works by basically occupying the receptor for adenosine. So it's a little bit of a convoluted mechanism, but basically all you need to know is that caffeine prevents the actions of adenosine. That's one of the reasons why caffeine makes us feel alert. But how much caffeine we drink and when we drink caffeine turns out to be vitally important for adjusting our wakefulness and for optimizing our sleep. So we'll talk about that as well. The other category of lever tools, which are immensely powerful for optimizing sleep are supplements. There now exist as many as eight different supplements that can powerfully modulate sleep in healthy ways and that have huge margins for safety. So we're going to talk about what those supplements are. In previous episodes of this podcast and as a guest on other podcasts, I've talked about three particular supplements, magnesium three and eight, apigenin and theanine, which together can really enhance the speed at which one falls asleep and people's ability to stay asleep and to really get into those deep stages of sleep that are particularly restorative. Today, we're going to talk a little bit more about each of those three and how they can best be used in combination, but we are also going to touch on some other supplements that I have not talked about much before, if at all. Things like glycine and GABA, as well as inositol. Many people are going to find inositol interesting and of particular use to them, especially if they're following a low carbohydrate diet or if they are fasting before sleep or just trying to avoid eating too close to bedtime and yet they're having a hard time falling asleep. Inositol also turns out to be especially useful for people who have a tendency to wake up in the middle of the night and have a hard time falling back asleep. It also has some interesting and potent effects on anxiety throughout the day. So we're going to talk about inositol as a tool as well. And then last in our list of general categories of levers and tools for optimizing sleep are digital tools. 
I always say digital tools. I don't necessarily mean devices. What I mean are things like non-sleep deep rest scripts. These are zero cost scripts that you listen to that take your body through some deep relaxation and that can help people both fall asleep, stay asleep, fall back asleep and get better at sleeping. And also going to talk about digital tools related to self-hypnosis. This is distinctly different from stage hypnosis. So I know some of you hear hypnosis and you think, oh, you know, people, you know, clucking like chickens and doing things that are outside their control. That's not at all what I'm referring to here. I'm talking about clinically and research supported tools that have been shown to enhance people's ability to fall and stay asleep and that can get you far better at sleeping. So again, to recap the list of levers and tools, we've got light and dark, and that includes the intensity of light, the timing of light, et cetera. We've got temperature, we have food, we have exercise, caffeine, supplements, and digital.